Carson, you are mighty full now. Giving her the good, good grain with alfalfa pellets and some extra trace minerals that are top dressing design. And she is loving it. And I'm gonna milk her out so she doesn't get mastitis, but we don't wanna pressure her too much because she seems like she needs to recover more. So we're just gonna do what we need to. And whatever we get, we'll go to the babies. Parsley is very easy to milk, but it's hard to do when I'm holding a camera. <laughs> Now, some of you may be wondering why we pulled her babies. So let me explain a little bit of backstory about Parsley in here. She was born on our farm and we um, sent her to a pet home so that she could be a, a family milker because she did have a spur on one of her teeth. Once she kitted, that spur was not showing to be a problem for milking. So she has been fine and easy to milk, but she hasn't had the best of luck with her babies. And after her last litter, we call them, because she has triplets to most of the time, I think. I think every time, no? So after she lost her last babies, she came back to our farm and she was in milk and we were milking her and she ended up adopting a couple of other babies in our herd just because she wanted to. And that was really sweet of her. And I thought, you know what? She's looking good. It was fall, it was breeding time. And I said, you know what? We're gonna breed her. And we did. And that is what gave us these beautiful triplets that we have now. What happened between fall and now is that she got parasites. We had been successful all fall and winter with not having any parasite outbreaks in the herd. And just when it started warming up and spring hit, she was the first one that started showing symptoms of parasites. She was losing weight and she became anemic. So we ended up treating her with the chemical dewormer because the herbs weren't helping. And now she is bouncing back wonderfully. We are treating her anemia with red cell and vitamin B and apple cider vinegar and lots of really good food. Food and minerals are very helpful for this condition. So she, I was very nervous when I realized she had kids because we weren't sure if she was pregnant or not because she didn't look pregnant. It wasn't until she started to develop an udder that I was like, oh no, she is bred. I actually was disappointed then because I was worried how her body was gonna handle uh, the rest of the pregnancy and kidding and nursing babies. So I had a good idea that I was gonna need to pull these babies anyway. And on the night that they were born, it was the coldest night that we've had almost. It went down in the 20s and it was high wind and they did good. She got colostrum in them the first day and through the night. I don't think they nursed much after that um, during the night when I wasn't there checking on them. I did check on them at midnight and then I didn't check on them again until the morning. When I checked on them again in the morning, they were weak and cold. And I do suspect that they might have been a few days premature, not very premature, but just enough that they were having a little bit harder time regulating their temperature. So it was either um, hypothermia type symptoms being caused by malnutrition because they didn't get enough to drink in the first 24 hours or because of them being slightly early. I'm not sure which, but either way, I knew in, in my heart that they needed to come inside, warm up and get full bellies. And that's what we did. And they bounced back very well. They are doing super duper duper well on the bottle. And we are giving them all the milk we get from her. They had her colostrum. We finished a bag of colostrum. As soon as we brought them in, they, we were using bagged colostrum and switched that over to cow milk, 100% whole cow milk and her milk. So they're getting her milk and cow milk now and they're thriving and they're doing really well. So we're going to try to sell the bucklings. Um, the doling is actually going back to Parsley's home and she is going to make a very wonderful addition to Robert's homestead. Yes, yes. 
So we are very excited that she seems like she is doing fantastic to the point where we may even introduce her babies back to her and see how they do, see how she does. Because more importantly, babies can be bottle fed. That, that I don't ever want to have bottle babies. I want to damn raise my babies as often as I can. But if it means that the health of my dam is in danger, then I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that, that my girl is healthy and strong. Yes, I'm gonna make sure you're healthy and strong. Another thing that happened is when she kitted, at first her milk came in and she had colostrum and the babies were drinking it. By morning, she had congested udder. And I'm not really sure what causes that to happen in some goats some of the time, but it's not something that's usually too hard to handle but it's hard to get the milk out. And I was unable to really get any milk out of her and the babies didn't seem like they were getting any milk out of her. So she didn't have her true milk come in yet. It was just the colostrum at the beginning, which was not quite enough for three babies. So what we did is we started giving her her vitamins and minerals and just really giving her everything her body needed in the form of food and nutrients and we got her on a double dose of Land of Habila, Parasite, and Immune Boosting Herbs, which is something that we do in addition to making our own herb mixes. It's something that when we know somebody is just really struggling, we go ahead and we add that to our regimen. So we gave her that, we gave her her vitamin B complex, all of the good stuff she got extra grain with alfalfa pellets in it to help boost her calcium intake. She had various amounts of different vegetation to forage on. That's extremely important with congested udder. And in the past, I have actually been able to cure congested udder by feeding comfrey from my garden to the goat that had it. And it was a quick turnaround for her. But we don't have any comfrey up yet here at this garden. I do have some starts and pots, but they're just not enough to harvest from. So I made sure that she got various different weeds out here in the pasture to choose from. And with that, combined with the herbal supplements we were giving and the nutritional supplements we were giving, she has made a quick turnaround. The babies are three days old now. And on the third day, she is producing so much milk that I got almost a half a gallon just to relieve her pressure. So that's gonna be very promising that her health may be well enough to receive these babies back, or if they sell, we might be able to milk her. But we are definitely going to watch her for any symptoms of getting worse. But right now, everything looks like it's better. So we're really happy about that. And we're glad that our natural solutions have once again pulled through for us to have another success story and we hope that what we've learned using natural remedies has helped you somehow if it has go ahead and subscribe to our channel and watch some of the other goat videos in our playlist and see if you can't pick up some other tips and tricks that we've learned along the way So I've got the heat lamp off and making sure that they're well adjusted to the 66 degrees that it is in the house before I take them outside. I just want to make sure that they don't get the shivers. I think we're past the point of them being in high risk of getting chilled again because it's been a couple of days since that happened. So I think we're probably safe, but I want to make sure and uh, wean them off that heat lamp get them so that they'll be able to go outside soon either way whether they're with mom or with the lambs they'll uh they'll be okay oh as much of a pain in the butt it is to have <laughs> bottled baby kids in the house it is very beneficial to us and our growing family oh you <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, they do. You boys love those babies, don't you? <laughs> don't fight over them. Odin, let, let Liam pet too. Everybody wants to pet the babies. And look down under the video in the comments section. See if there's any discussions you want to get involved in. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. Check out our description where we have our Amazon storefront and our Amazon wish list, along with all the other links to our social media. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Room.